In this video, we're looking at the effect of temperature and catalysts on the rate of reactions. And we're going to look at this in the context of Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions. We're going to start with the example of temperature first. How does temperature affect the rate of a reaction? So here we have a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. I'm going to pick a temperature for this, let's say 300 Kelvin. And there's going to be a certain activation energy, which we can represent with a vertical line on our graph here. Any particles that are moving faster than this vertical line, in other words, particles that are in this area just to the right of that, those will have sufficient speed and therefore sufficient kinetic energy that whenever they collide, they result in a reaction. Any particles to the left of that line won't have enough speed and therefore won't have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy barrier. And so any collisions with these molecules right here will not result in a reaction taking place from that collision. So we really only have a small number of particles at any given time that can collide and cause the reaction to take place. And we'd expect this to be a relatively slow reaction the smaller that section is. So here I am coloring in the particles that can overcome that activation energy barrier when they collide. Now what happens if we increase the temperature? So I'm gonna redraw the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution but at a higher temperature, let's say 600 Kelvin. Notice how that shifts the particles to the right or really over a larger number of speeds. But there's also more particles now that are to the right of that activation energy barrier. Or in other words, there are more particles that have enough energy to overcome the activation energy barrier and therefore there are more particles that can react when they collide. I'm shading those particles in now, and we can see that's a much bigger area, which represents a greater number of particles. So to summarize that, a higher temperature shifts the curve so that more collisions will have enough energy to overcome the activation energy barrier. So that's the effect of temperature. There's more collisions that have enough energy to overcome the activation energy barrier, therefore that reaction will happen faster. Another effect is that the increased temperature will increase the rate constant K. So whenever we're talking about a rate constant for a reaction, we're really saying the rate constant for reaction at a given temperature. If we change the temperature, it'll change the rate constant. Higher temperature, the greater that rate constant will be. Now let's take a look at the example of a catalyst. A catalyst won't shift the curve any, but it will change where that activation energy barrier is. So let's start off with the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution that looks pretty much the same as the one in the left to start off with. We have an activation energy barrier line and any particles to the right of that or that have a speed grade enough where they have a more energy than that vertical line represents will result in a reaction. In the case of a catalyst, it's gonna change what that activation energy barrier is. It's gonna lower that barrier. The catalyst will shift the activation energy barrier to the left, and that results in more particles being able to overcome that activation energy barrier. You can see those represented in purple here on the diagram now. So it doesn't shift the curve, it doesn't change the speeds or the energies of the particles, it just lowers the barrier that those particles have to overcome. Or, in other words, catalysts lower the activation energy so more collisions can overcome the activation energy threshold. The activation energy threshold is lowered because it's gonna actually change the mechanism or the steps that a reaction goes through in order for this reaction to take place. To see what I mean by that, let's take a look at an energy profile diagram that's gonna show the potential energy over the course of the reaction. So here I'm gonna draw my axes and I'm gonna label this vertical axis potential energy this horizontal axis, the reaction progress, and we're gonna go from reactants to the products down over here. The way I have it drawn now, this is an exothermic reaction, which isn't relevant to this problem, but it's gonna have a relatively high activation energy barrier. In other words, particles have to have a lot of energy or a very high temperature or high speed for them to result in a reaction. That activation energy barrier is represented right here. But what a catalyst can do is it can take a one-step reaction like this and break it down into a couple smaller steps. That catalyst could just be a small molecule present in the reaction. It could be an enzyme. It could be a, a metal surface that the reactants are gonna react on. There's lots of types of catalysts, but they all essentially work the same. They'll take a reaction that has a high activation energy and break that down into steps that each require a lower activation energy. So let's see that on the diagram here. We've got the non-catalyzed reaction in red, and in blue, I drew the catalyzed reaction broken down into two steps. We can see the activation energy for each of those. Here's one activation energy, and notice how that activation energy is much smaller than this activation energy of the non-catalyzed step, meaning that this first step will happen very quickly. But the second step of the reaction also will take place very quickly. And if you remember, it's always the slowest step that determines the rate or the speed of the reaction. 
I think in this picture, EA1 is going to be my slowest step by a little bit. And we can compare that activation energy to the activation energy in the non-catalyzed reaction and see that this is going to be a much smaller activation energy barrier. And so in the catalyzed version of the reaction, there will be a lot more collisions that can overcome this lowered activation energy barrier. And therefore, that collision is going to happen much, much faster. And so to summarize that, we can say that activation energy thresholds in a catalyzed reaction are lower and therefore resulting in a faster reaction. To summarize all of this, an increased temperature results in a faster reaction. It'll shift the molecules in the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution to the right, or in other words, over higher speeds, resulting in more particles that can overcome that activation energy barrier. That'll increase the rate constant K for that reaction. And in the presence of a catalyst, it won't cause the molecules to be moving at a faster speed, but it will lower the activation energy threshold from here over to somewhere to the left on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which results in more particles being able to overcome that activation energy barrier because that barrier is lower. And the way that a catalyzed reaction does that is by taking a high activation energy one-step reaction and breaking it down into smaller steps, each of which has a lower activation energy, and therefore more particles can overcome it, resulting in a much faster reaction. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful in understanding the effect of temperature and catalysts on the rate of reaction on Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions and the activation energy.